Hello there, Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. Today we are going to talk about defenses from different guard positions, especially Borta di Ferro and Guardia dal Grono. So, in the last few lessons we learned to parry Mandriti and Riversi from Guardia di Testa. So let's look at it one more time. We raised up our sword and then if we are weak in the parry, we are going around with the mandrito. And if we are strong in the parry, we are entering in and one time in Guardia de Entrare or just with an imbarcata from Guardia di Testa. So these are attacks that find our sword on our outside. And it is fairly easy to get these parries if your sword points to your left, so their right, okay? Because then this blade will be on your outside of the blade and then it's easy to raise and defend yourself. It would be foolish to disengage to the other side to perform another parry, which would be also possible and that would be with the mandrito or a direct parry. And this is the one we are going to talk about today. If they are not engaging on our outside, they must be engaging on the inside of our blade. So this parry is also possible from Coda Longa, but it's uh, more common if they throw, let's say, a Mandrito Tondo, for example, which will be on your inside. Okay, and from here, there are two options you basically have. The first one is a Dewey Tempi option and one you should be quite familiar with because we used it against thrusts already. And that is the Mezzo Mandrito and the counter thrust, the Punta Riversa or even the Reverso to the head. So depending on pressure, if there's nothing, you can easily repost with the Reverso and if there's, there's pressure, you want to wind in and thrust basically in Guardia di Faccia. Okay, but if you train this action long enough, you probably also want to know, okay, what would be a contra tempo action? So while they attack, you parry and repost at the same time. And this is of course possible in Guardia di Faccia. At the same time, you parry and repose. So let's talk about a little bit how to make this parry work a bit better. If they attack your head and you don't move at all and just raise your point to the head, then probably you will end up strong and strong. Forte and forte, which is nothing else than an arm wrestling match and not really too much of a martial art. We want an advantage in leverage. So one thing, and the thing the Giovanni della Gocchia gives us, is a step forward. A step forward, why? Because then we can engage their mezzo spada, so the middle of their sword, a bit earlier. So we could step in there, and now you see it's not forte against forte, but it's Mezzo Spada of Stefan against my Forte. And this parry, parry and repost, works especially well if they attack you with a Squalamburato or even a Tondo. So there has to be some angle in this blow because then you can collect it at the same, same time as you're stepping in. Okay, you could ask, but I could also step in and just push my arm out to meet their blade earlier. Yes, of course, you could do this. You could just raise your arm out, but at the same time, while you, if they're just throwing their mandrito, it's, everything is fine. You would engage their mezzo spada, but you're leaving a huge opening on this side. So I would advise you to step behind your blade, to leave this opening on your personal outside as little as possible. Okay, and this is also probably why Marozzo advises us 
when he parries with the two-handed sword in the primo assalto uh, to step with the right foot two feet span to your left. So he's actually, just like I am, stepping into the blow. And this is just one, uh, one possibility to gain this leverage. Okay, but what if they are striking like directly down to the head? If they're striking directly down to the head and you're moving into that blow, okay, you're um, forcing their blow to come more to your own right shoulder, which will be particularly difficult if you want to now get into, so it's really here, to get into uh, their mezzo spada. So what will most likely happen here? You will respond with weakness, you let the blow go in vain and strike around with the reverso. So just like in Guardi di Testa, where you could parry with your strong or with your weak, you have two options. And these are parrying with a thrust or with a strike accordingly. Okay, but what if they are striking with a reverso? Well, if they strike with a reverso and you're in coda longa, no problem at all. You could still just parry with your true edge. But now let's take a look at another guard. Another very important one is Borta di Ferro Estretta. With the sword, not on your outside anymore, but on the inside of the knee, close to the knee, and the point towards your opponent. So this guard actually already uh, favors different parries. Why? Because now it's far more likely that they will actually engage on the inside of your blade because it's pointing just a little bit to your right maybe or just straight at them. So this would be a different situation in Coda Longa where you're presenting more of the outside on your blade instead of Porta di Ferro. Okay, so in this position, you could still parry in Guardi di Faccia if they strike here. If they go around and it's really wide motion, you might actually still parry in Guardi di Testa. But a smaller action would be to just use the false edge of your blade. So if they strike a reverso, you can parry with the false edge, turn your body well behind your sword and then you can still perform one of two actions. The first one would be a thrust, again in Guardi da Licorno, or maybe even in Guardi d'Entrare. So you parry with the false edge, and then you strike around. You turn around your wrist and thrust inwards. And another option would be to, just after the falso manco, the falso from your left, to just strike again with a mandrito. So from here, you could just go in and strike behind their blade. And what I would advise you to actually step towards them with your left foot, not just around, but towards them to stay fairly close to their blade, to leave their point behind you, to stay close so any blow they can strike is already fairly close to you so it uh, doesn't get a lot of momentum going. Okay, so if you leave this blade, you don't want a huge way here so they can actually again strike you, but you want to leave a little bit. So if you're actually here in contact here again, that's totally fine. All right, one more time, both actions. You could either go around or just get down here. And this parry is especially small, which makes it great against an attack behind your blade. So if I'm in Porte di Ferro, for example, you could strike a mandrito to my inside, you could strike a reverso to my outside, but sometimes, and especially if my point's drifting towards my left, you might want to strike an, a mandrito to my outside, maybe even towards my forearm 
aura towards my face. So really slowly, how does it look like it? A mandrito behind my blade. Yeah. So it comes to the other side of my blade and it feels actually much like a German Duplieren. Okay. You go around the blade, you have the, uh, the threat and you need your opponent to actually parry it because of course, if I just extend my blade, this action wouldn't be that useful anymore because it would be just a double kill. But if I'm really defensive and my opponent decides to do this action, maybe I'm sloppy in my guard and he attacks behind it, then this action of pairing with the Fazzo is again super useful and we can wind in just like against the Reverso. It's just a bit harder actually because the action is a, just a lot more tighter and a, more, a bit more difficult to see. Okay, and the last action for today, before you bring it together with all the other actions you've learned so far, is a push in Guardia d'Alicorno against a thrust. So it's actually just an active motion with your hand while thrusting in, in Contra Tempo once again. Okay, and we are going slowly here. And this teaches you to actively use your offhand, again, especially against thrusts. You can perform like a beating action just with your offhand. Okay, thank you very much. If you would like to support us, please like and share this video with your friends. Also, you can support us on buy me a coffee or you can visit our fan shops. Until next time, ciao.